As you guys know, I am a big fan of gearbox drivetrains. Almost all of my journeys around the globe have been without a derailleur or a chain. But in a head-to-head -head battle between the two most popular options, the roll-off hub and pinion gearbox, which one comes out on top? This will likely be the internet's most thorough analysis of these bicycle gearbox systems. But did you expect anything less? We'll assess 18 different criteria to find out, once and for all, which is the ultimate bicycle gearbox. I am going to focus on the 18-speed version of the pinion gearbox for this comparison, but it's worth noting that you can get them in 6, 9 and 12-speed versions as well. Number 1. Gear Range Your bike's gear range determines the speeds at which you can pedal your bike. Gear range gives us an idea for how easy it will be to climb hills, cruise along on the flat, or whether you'll have enough gearing to pedal on the downhills too. A roll-off has a gear range of 526%, while the pinion offers 636%, the widest gear range of any bicycle. Using a roll-off hub with a low drive ratio, you can comfortably pedal up a hill at 5km an hour in the smallest gear. When you shift to the largest gear, you will top out at 45 kilometers per hour. The pinion gearbox with its extra 21% gear range provides 21% more top end speed. So you can still pedal right up to 54 kilometers per hour. Number two, gear steps. The pinion gearbox and roll-off hub have even gear steps of 11.5% and 13.6%. The best way to understand what these numbers mean is to translate them to cadence, which is the number of times your crank spin per minute. When you change the gears on your bike, your cadence becomes faster or slower for every shift. Ideally, we want the smallest possible cadence changes because it allows us to maintain the cadence we prefer without having a big change in speed. With a cadence difference of 9 RPM for every shift, the pinion gearbox is as good as it gets for a wide range bicycle drivetrain. It's slightly harder to find the perfect cadence with the roll-off hub, as the cadence difference when you shift gears is 11 RPM. For reference, a 2x11 drivetrain offers around 10 RPM differences, and a 1x12 has 13 RPM differences. Number 3. Drive Efficiency We have run lab tests to determine how much of your pedal power is lost in different gearbox drivetrains. The roll-off hub is the most efficient available, with an average efficiency of 94.5% across all gears. The pinion has a few more losses in the system, so it averages out at 90.5%. When it comes to the pinion gearbox, it is understood that the large crankshaft seals, faster internal rotating cogs, smaller front chain ring, and faster chain speed are the most likely sources of the extra friction. Number 4. Weight the roll-off hub works out to be about one kilogram lighter than the pinion gearbox. The hub and associated components are around 700 grams lighter, but there is also around 300 grams extra frame weight required to house the pinion gearbox. Number five, noise. The roll-off hub is notorious for producing noise in some of its gears, in particular, gear seven. The pinion gearbox is not completely quiet, it still makes a slight whirring sound, but it's certainly less pronounced, especially in the lower half of the gear range. Number six, gear pickup. Gear pickup determines how quickly your drivetrain engages when you start pedaling. On most bikes, you'll notice a small clunk when you apply power to the pedals, which is usually the pull system in your rear hub engaging. Ideally, we want instant engagement, but hubs usually offer between 24 and 36 engagement points per wheel revolution. The roll-off and pinion have a different number of engagement points depending on the gear selected. The roll-off has the most engagement points of the two, between 16 and 54, while the pinion has between 14 and 22. But the pinion gearbox also needs to engage at the rear hub when you pedal. So ideally, you want a hub with the most engagement points possible to minimize any drivetrain slop. The Onyx hub wins this competition with its instant engagement sprag clutch design. Hey, if you're enjoying my tech content, make sure to grab a copy of the Touring Bicycle Buyer's Guide or the Bikepacking Bike Buyer's Guide. Both will teach you everything you need to know about bikes before allowing you to compare more than 150 bikes at the back of the book. And it's updated yearly for free. Right, let's move on to number seven, shifting. When you change gears with the roll-off shifter, there is a varying level of shifting resistance as you engage different sections of the gearbox. 
The pinion shifter has a lighter shifting action across all gears, making it a bit nicer to use. Number 8. Oil Changes Both of these gear systems operate inside a sealed oil bath, and you'll need to change this oil periodically. It's a very easy job to do yourself, and it won't take you more than 10 minutes. Pinion wants you to change your oil every 10,000 km of cycling, while Roll-Off calls for 5,000 km intervals. Number 9. Price While both gearbox systems are priced incredibly high, the Pinion gearbox is undoubtedly the most expensive gearbox option. The price difference varies a little between manufacturers, but Roll-Off bikes are usually somewhere between 600 and 1,000 euros cheaper for the equivalent bike build. Number 10. Product refinement period. With over 20 years in production, Roloff has had a lot of time to iron out any kinks in their product. In comparison, the Pinion gearbox is a spring chicken with about eight production years. While not a definitive measure of product refinement, the fact that people have been able to put huge distances on Roloff hubs has certainly helped to develop the product. Number 11. Warranty. The Pinion gearbox comes with a 5-year warranty, while the roll-off hub comes with just 2 years. In addition, if there is a failure, it's much easier to swap out a Pinion gearbox than it is to dismantle and rebuild a new roll-off wheel. Number 12. Retrofitting and Interchangeability as the roll-off hubs do not require a specially designed frame, there are enough adapter accessories so that the hub will fit almost any bike. That makes them the perfect retrofit if you're looking for a low maintenance drivetrain. You can also own just one roll-off hub that will transfer between bikes. I've actually used one of my roll-off hubs on three different builds. Number 13, wheel swaps. Many modern bikes have the ability to run multiple wheel sizes. A mid-fat bike is the perfect example. It can fit 26 by 4 inch, 27.5 by 3 inch, and 29 by 2.2 inch wheels, all on the one bike. If you wanted one super versatile bike, you could use a pinion gearbox and have two or three different wheel sets that you switch out depending on the terrain. In comparison, you would need multiple roll-off hubs to provide the same versatility. Number 14, mountain biking. If you're looking to use a gearbox for mountain biking, you'll want the pinion. A crank-based gearbox makes the most sense. By centralizing the weight on the bike and reducing the unsprung mass at the rear wheel, you can improve the overall suspension performance and ride dynamics of the bike. In addition, pinion gearboxes use smaller front chain rings, providing more ground clearance from rocks and roots. Number 15, hiker bike. There is friction between the hub seal and rear cog on a roll-off hub. As a result, you'll find your crank spin when you push your bike. This can put your pedals in a very awkward location when negotiating narrow tracks. So the pinion is definitely the better option here. Number 16, electric bikes. Almost all of the top tier e-bikes use mid-drive motors. And there is a strong case for this setup, in particular on steep gradients where the motor can use each of your gears to optimize the torque and therefore optimize the battery range. As the pinion gearbox occupies the space of a mid-drive electric motor, the roll-off hub is usually the go on an e-bike. Roll-Off actually offer Bosch compatible gear shifters that tell the motor to reduce the output torque when you're shifting, providing one of the smoothest gear shifts of any electric bike. Number 17, cable changes. Pinion gear cables seem to wear out much quicker than roll-off cables, but under daily use, you should get at least one year from either set of cables. Gear cable changes are a much more simple process for the roll-off hub, which is demonstrated in the tutorial video that runs for about half as long. Number 18, aftermarket shifters. Both the pinion gearbox and the roll-off hub come with a twist shifter, which I love, but there are aftermarket shifters too. In terms of roll-off options, Sync makes both integrated drop bar shifters and trigger shifters for flat bars. Gebler makes the Robox, which is a very neat shifting system that allows you to use 11-speed SRAM or Campagnolo shifters to change your roll-off gears. In comparison, there is only one aftermarket shifter for the Pinion P118, and that's a drop bar twist shifter by Comotion. 
Unfortunately, this head-to-head -head resulted in a tie, with both gearboxes ending up with nine points. There are clearly pros and cons to both gearbox systems, so ultimately you'll need to go through this video and weigh up the metrics that are most important to you. For a faster and lighter build, the roll-off is definitely the most compelling option, especially if you prefer drop bars. For a mountain bike build, you'll definitely want the pinion gearbox. Otherwise, there is really no clear-cut winner here. Both systems offer ultra-reliable, long-distance drivetrains and, frankly, are both an engineering marvel of the bike world. Let me know in the comments section below which type of gearbox would suit you best. Also, consider supporting my work on Patreon. You won't find content with this level of detail anywhere else on the internet, so it's a pretty cool mission to support.